Hey, welcome to Church Comms 101, where church communications are fun, Instagram is life, and no one feels like an idiot. However, nothing makes you feel more like an idiot than when you step on some kind of social media faux pas that you didn't know existed. You break some rule that was invisible. Just like everything else, social media has rules. And they're not really posted anywhere, so it's kind of understandable if you don't know what they are. Oh, you'll still get punished for not knowing them, but I just understand. So here are 10 unwritten social media rules that I've come across that maybe you've come across too that you didn't know existed. Let's talk about how we can avoid these landmines. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends if you really enjoy this kind of stuff. First unwritten rule is easy. Don't like your own posts. The fact that you posted it means that you obviously care enough about it and like it enough that you wanted other people to see it. There's no reason for you to like it too. That's kind of redundantly redundant. Besides, it makes you look super lame. Like you're congratulating yourself for something really simple that is, it was really easy to do. I wash my hands. High five, clean five. Another unwritten rule is don't get political. Remember that last time you had a great in-depth conversation about politics with someone online and it changed their perspective forever and it solidified the fact that your truth is correct? Anyone? Anybody? No? Social media is not a great place to have these divisive conversations because they're in public in front of other people and ego gets involved. And because of that ego, what ends up happening is you basically entrench each other more in the opinions and positions that you've already had. You want to make real conversation, you want to make a real difference in politics, you talk to people face to face. Another unwritten rule is to stay positive. Now, I don't mean to just to pretend like everything's perfect and, and great whenever it's really not. This is fine. We are just fine. But nobody likes to be around a person that's just constantly negative. You have friends like that? People that are just constantly looking at the negative. Well, we can't do this because, and that's not gonna work because of this, and that's a, that's a bad idea because of blah, before you even try it out. Keep things light, helpful, positive, fun, and bring value to your followers. The fourth unwritten rule of social media is don't be creepy. If you're running social media for a church, you definitely wanna be able to like and comment on some of your followers' stuff. But doing that as the church carries a heaviness and a lot of responsibility. And you have to be very careful how you do it, when you do it, what you say, because it could come off as creepy if you misstep here. Try not to comment as the church or the organization after 10 p.m. Because before 10 p.m. it could sound like this. Your kids are so cute. But after 10 p.m. Your kids are so cute. You don't want to be misunderstood in that way. All right, our next unwritten rule is don't spam your feed. And what I mean by that is use the album function of Instagram or the album post of Facebook instead of posting one picture at a time so that we constantly see over and over different pictures from your mission trip or different pictures from your, your uh, event that you just had. Because here's the thing, if I see too many things from the same person about the same thing, the tendency for your followers is to unfollow you. It becomes annoying. And in the world of social media, if you annoy your followers, they'll stop following you and then you won't have any way to connect with them on that social media platform and you lose your influence. All right, our next unwritten rule is the 80-20 rule. In the sales and marketing world, the 80-20 rule tends to be about 20% is what you should be selling and asking people to buy things online. And the other 80% should be about creating conversations and doing some content marketing. In the church, it's no different. The hard truth about social media is nobody followed you really to find out about the events. Nobody cares about your events. Just imagine it, if, especially if it's constant. You know, hey, have you heard about this event? Hey, have you come to this thing? Hey, have you signed up for this mission trip? No, and I don't care. They'll be gone. They'll stop following you and you lose that influence. All right, our next unwritten rule is don't use automated responses. Why is that? Because people know when they are talking to a robot and they don't like it. They recognize how inauthentic that feels. Besides, I've seen way too many examples of how someone would have message into a church and say, hey, can you pray for my dad? He's in the hospital. And the automated response fires back, hey, we're so glad you joined us this Sunday. Can we help you find a small group? Next unwritten rule is always get permission to post pictures of kids on social media. At the very least, you should all have a vinyl printed at like Fast Signs or Signorama or something like that 
that states on your windows as people walk in that photos and videos will be taken while you're inside and then we used on social media and on the website, etc., for our purposes. There needs to be some kind of disclaimer. However, even though you have that, it still doesn't legally cover you when it comes to things like taking photos of kids who are in the foster system whose parents don't need to know where they are. The last thing you want is for a irate parent showing up to your church service because they saw that the kid was there trying to take their foster kid back from the parents who are fostering and you have a huge legal issue on your hands, that's the last thing you want for your church. Anytime that I have to post photos of kids or I'm going to post photos, I always go and ask my children's ministers, who is this kid? Is it okay to post? Can we call their parents? And they help me do that. Because I don't always know who they are. And if you don't have permission, don't post. So our ninth unwritten rule is that silence is loud. Have you ever had this happen? Hey Seth, how's it going? Awkward. So uncomfortable. If your church is silent on social media, it could communicate a disconnection with not only your congregation, but the culture around you. I think pastors and church leadership should have at least one platform that they're active on somewhat. I don't expect you to be on there every day. You don't have to spend all your time on there, but just post once or twice a week and then try to engage here and there because it shows that you understand that the world that your people live in is real for them and that you're being part of it. You're going to where they are and where they are is probably Facebook. The last unwritten rule that I've observed is that spelling and grammar are important. Nothing can derail a social great post like a few placed well spelling errors. If you wade into an argument or you jump into a conversation or you even just post about one of your events and you use the wrong form of your, they're gonna let you know about it. Oh, oh, oh. and by the way, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E means you are. Y-O-U-R means your. The reason that's bad is because as soon as you make a mistake like that that's simple, it discredits you for the rest of the things that you wanna say. So what did I miss? I'm sure there's a bunch more that are out there that you know that you have seen as unwritten rules of social media that as soon as you step on that landmine, boom, and you have no idea what you did wrong. I'd love to hear what they are in the comments. Subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends because I'd love to connect with them as well. Thanks for watching. See ya!